Hi, I'm Michelle Asplin with Mindshare Marketing and Implementation Services. And this video is about Membership Works, and I'm going to log in and show you exactly how it works. So if you haven't been on my website yet, just so you know, if you go under the Services tab and you click on Membership Works Demo Start Here, I've got information about the demo that I have created, and I'll be showing you behind the scenes in Membership Works how it was set up. But you can browse through the various pages on this demo and be able to see what does a sign up form look like, what does a membership directory look like. So when you first sign up for Membership Works, you're going to go to membershipworks.com and set up your account. I've already got my demo account set up. So I'm gonna go over here under customers and then customer sign in, my login information. <clears throat> so now this is what membership works looks like behind the scenes. So I've got 10 sample people set up all with fictitious addresses. They are post offices across the United States and actually across the world. <laughs> Um, so we start here on what is called the stats page. So we've got 10 uh, different contacts in membership works. And so um, it kind of breaks it down a little bit by who's current and who is past due and what our recurring revenue will be if everybody pays based on the memberships that are in here. Here's our different types of membership levels and add on services shown visually. And here they are. Um, we have our membership levels. We have a subscription just for um, people to subscribe to a bulletin, for example, maybe a, a publication you do annually that's pretty hefty and people pay for that. And there's a cost to mail it for sure. So uh, we have an option for people just to sign up to receive that or they can receive an online uh, version of that. Otherwise, we have different types of membership and these will be whatever it works for your organization. You can have as many as you need. And we have um, renewal notices and whatnot that are associated with those types of membership. Then we have over here what are called add-ons. And so this is something that can be added at the time that a member renews or they can add it mid-year. Your renewals can be based on a calendar date like January 1st or June 1st, or they can be based on anniversary, just a 12 month membership period. So we've got a breeder directory here, for example, for $30. So people can choose to pay for that at the same time that they renew their membership. And they can also choose to make a donation in um, specific amounts to specific funds, you know, whatever it is that we want to charge anything extra for at the time they renew is a nice time for them to pay for that. Membership Works coordinates or excuse me, organizes your database based on labels. And so, for example, here are some very common labels that might be used for a dog club. So they've got some activities that they may be known for that they can choose. They might be on a committee. So we've lumped those together by starting with the word committee. Uh, we've got officers and board of directors. They may have regions that people get sorted into and they may want to run some reports by who is in a certain region or look up people. You can do that. And some clubs and organizations ask their members, what kind of skills do you have that you would be willing to offer to help with our organization? Now, this isn't necessarily something that gets published on the website in their profile, but it's something that you can create a database of what are some of the skills that our members have that they're willing to share. So again, this is sort of that stats page that you land on when you first log in. I'm going to try and keep this brief. So I'm just going to jump up to the members tab here. So here's my database. I've got 10 accounts in membership. So here they are. And um, these are what's called like their business card. And you can click on any member at any time and go a little bit deeper into their actual membership profile. Um, you can click on their profile and see all their contact information and make any changes to that. There are privacy settings that we can set up that they can keep some or all their information private 
you know, display it in the directory or not. Maybe they don't want that. Here's a sample business card. You can add more images. You can add a uh, description. So that's a member's account. If I go back out now here, we're all back to our 10. If you want to email your members, you can click on the email tab and then start to craft your email by putting in your subject line and your message. Preview that and send it. You can also add an attachment to that if you needed to send an email to all of your members. Maybe you want to segment your members because you've got an email that you want to send out just to certain people. You can choose over here, add search criteria, and you can then choose by all the different labels. So I have some labels set up by membership level. So maybe you want to send, you know, something to everybody who is a household type of membership. Um, you would choose that and then you can choose search and that whittles it down. And now I've got four that match that criteria. And then I can just click on email and send a message to just those people. I can also, um, export that information. So I can click on export and maybe choose the fields that I want. Maybe I want their name and their address because I'm mailing them something. And um, maybe I also want to know if they have a Facebook and LinkedIn profile because I'm going to be doing some marketing related to that. So I would scroll down and maybe I want to know when they joined because maybe I just want to have that information. Then I would choose download. It downloads it as a CSV file, which then you can convert into um, a Microsoft Excel, or you can copy that into a Google Sheet, whatever you want to do to manage your information in a spreadsheet. Um, you can choose that. All right. Folders are another option as a way to sort of um, classify or categorize your members. You, you'll be able to see which members are past due and which members are current. Um, you'll be able to sort it by your subscribers only. Maybe you have sponsors and they can be in a folder. So you can create folders to help organize your club or organization in a variety of ways. If we click on membership labels and or labels and membership, you'll see the membership levels. So here are the levels that I have set up in my sample database. And so you'll notice that this one, for example, is not in the directory because these are the people that are just subscribing to a publication. And then I have people like Lifetime who they can't sign up online because this is something maybe that is earned and, and something that it administrator would switch their account to this level at some point. So you have some options there. So let's just click on individual because that's kind of a standard membership level. So in here, we've got quite a few different settings. They can upgrade and downgrade their membership. Um, here's where we say if we allow them to be listed in the directory and if we allow or not allow uh, them to sign up online. We have a uh, billing tab. This is an example of a fixed date where they renew January 1st, but if they sign up in November or December, they get that for free, so we won't be charging them for that. Um, and then we've got some billing options where they can, this level is $35, and so they can pay by credit card. They can do an auto recurring pay by credit card or pay by check option. Here are the renewal notices that we would send out 15 days prior, three days prior, and you can click on all these to get detailed information. So here's the actual email that goes out. And I've put some information in here that tells them what their membership level is, how much it is, when it expires, and a, a link to the website. This actions tab is really cool. So when someone signs up online, they automatically get added to the members folder. And then we send them out a welcome email that can be customized to your club or organization. 
when they make a renewal payment, we wanna make sure that they are in the members folder and then they get removed from the past due folder. And when a member switches to different levels, um, we can make sure that they stay in the members folder. So maybe I'll highlight that. If a member goes past due after, let's say, three days or 30 days or 90 days or whatever works for your, your club, um, then we're going to add them to the past due folder and we're going to remove them from the members folder. So some of what that means is um, we have some pages that are member only content and we maybe have some events or opportunities or a shopping cart that's just for members only. If somebody's past due, let's say 30 days, and that's your cutoff, then we'll remove them from the members folder and they'll get moved to the past due folder. That means that they cannot then go to see the member only content or go to shop or purchase anything that might be in, you know, that's available just to members only. Now, as soon as they renew, they will automatically be moved back into the members folder out of the past due folder. So it's really nice to have these things automated to make it easier for you to manage your membership. Plus those um, renewal notices that I showed you that go out, you know, they can get a little stiffer as time goes on as to exactly what do you want to say to your members to encourage them to renew prior to the actual expiration date. But you know, you'll have many opportunities to reach out to them prior. Hopefully more on time or early renewals makes it easier for your organization. You're not chasing down checks, especially if they choose to pay online. It's just awesome. So here are the membership levels um, that we have set up. And again, you can click on one individually and you can see the information that can be priced out um, annually, because most clubs have annual membership, but you can do things monthly if you have someone that wants to pay for a subscription, for example, and it's a monthly payment instead of annually, we can do that too. And then the labels, this is where we actually create the labels that I showed you earlier, and it's really simple to add a new one. You just click add label, type out your label name, and hit save. Very easy. All right, so this event list is the list of the events that I've already set up as my samples. Here's that quarterly social event that I clicked on in uh, the video previous, so you can look at that, but here's what it looks like in Membership Works. You've got your event set up. You start with the dashboard. Then the event setup is I chose to have it be a quarterly event. So that means that it's going to have this blue color on my calendar. I can name it whatever I want. I give it that start time and an end time is optional. And I have the address. You can add an image to your event. You can have detailed information about it. The next tab that you didn't see on the website was ticketing. So here's where I've set it up to the event capacity is 20 and I'm allowing 10 members and 10 non-members. My members are $5 and my non-members are $10. I could always say that my members are free. I could click on this ticket and the ticket price is zero. And then I just come down here and save that. And now my members are free, but my non-members have to pay $10. Maybe I have more capacity in my space and now I'm available to have 30. So if that's the case, maybe I want a maximum of 15 members and the rest I want guests because maybe we were, this is a social event where we really want to bring in other people. And so I can change this maximum quantity available here as well and just save that. And here's my registration tab. Registration starts on this date. And um, once people do register for it on this dashboard, you'd start to see um, who had signed up, 
what ticket they bought and it would start to add up all your information. Plus you'd have a line on there if you needed to edit their ticket or refund them for whatever reason, you have that ability to do that as well. Here is the event calendar tab and what it looks like. So very similar to um, what you see on the website. And if you want to copy an event, you would just click on this event and drag it down to some other time and let go. And it says, you want this on April 18th, 2024? Sure, and I'm gonna copy that event. And now I can click on it and go to my event setup and change anything that I want as far as tickets or times or things that might be custom to that particular event. All right, forms, carts, and donations. So this is fun. So um, we have some set up here for um, examples. Maybe you have an application for some award or something like that. Um, and you want to be able to set that up. So we would have this application and you would ask for their name information, you know, basic contact information. And then you would have uh, something that maybe they upload a document or something like that. You can have different items in your um, form as well. And then there are settings when they check out um, what happens and who gets the notification and are they allowed to pay offline or only online if it's something that you charge a fee for. And then you can email them a very customized receipt once they have filled out this application. So another example would be some national um, types of things. Maybe you have a national event and you've got some sponsorships that are available and so you might have a form where people would sign up to become a sponsor for um, certain levels. All right, and then jobs and other boards would be our um, classified ads or um, announcement board or job board as well. So a classified ad board, um, again, we would have our general settings. Maybe this one, it looks like, um, the listings are going to expire in 90 days and it's only available to members and we're charging them a posting fee of $10 as a way to make some additional money for the organization. Then we go to our template, we ask some information and this is a classified ad. So they got, they have the ability to sell something. So they would add some information like this. Um, and so it's just a, a neat way to have additional communication within the organization and with your members if you wanted to do something like classified ads. All right, so then the customization, um, don't really need to go over that because that's just getting everything set up for you. But these organization settings tab is important. This is uh, my contact information for my account. Right now I'm on the free account up to 50 members, which I usually like to start people out on the free account until we get to the point of needing to add their payment processing. Um, then you would start to uh, pay for your membership works um, account and you can check on the membership works website for fees. It's based on how many contacts you have. Integration here, um, I can list out the specific URL where I have my event calendar and my uh, member management accounts. And um, when I have something related to membership, like a sign up or a renewal, who do we want to get those notifications? You can have multiple people by just putting a comma and then the rest of the address for an additional person. Maybe your events go someplace else and you can put someone else in there. A couple other things, it does integrate with QuickBooks. And so you've got a lot of options in here for customizing to match up what membership works calls it and what the expense account or revenue account is in QuickBooks. And then lists is for MailChimp. So um, if you integrate with MailChimp, then when a new member signs up online or you add them manually, they get added to MailChimp 
automatically. And if in the future they are not a member anymore and you delete them, then they get deleted from MailChimp as well. And I've got a post on my website that talks about um, the advantages of using a third-party provider like MailChimp for your marketing for your group. So in a nutshell, that is kind of what membership works looks like on the back end. You have opportunities to do all different kinds of reports. Um, this financial tab here doesn't show anything because I'm not charging anything, but eventually it would have a graph and it would show um, when you have membership revenue, when you have donation revenue, when you have revenue from your cart, like you're selling something and um, opportunity to export that information into QuickBooks. Or um, like in the case of our members, if you just wanted to download your membership lifts, list, again, you would just click on that export tab and choose all of the um, buttons or you know whatever it is that you want to be included in what you export. All right, there we go. So that is kind of what membership works looks like um, on the back end, to give you some ideas of some of the ways that it can be customized for your nonprofit group, your club, your organization, your business. Um, so let me know if you have any questions. Again, Michelle Asplin with Mindshare Marketing and Implementation Services.